Right, ladies and gents, while we are in between jobs with these two farm old tractors, I thought I'd just take this opportunity, give you a little walk around the two tractors. So, as I mentioned before, underneath the underpinnings of these two tractors, they are identical. So, it is that uh, 3.6 litre, four-cylinder FPT engine using both of them. It's the same 12x12 transmission and it is the same back end on these two tractors. Now, with the smaller AC, well, with the smaller Farmall A models, there is a little bit more differences between these two tractors, but the two models that we have, the 100A and the 120C, underpinnings identical. So, moving on then. Diesel tank, our blue tank, both identical on the uh, on these two tractors, under 30 litre diesel tank, uh, 10 litre our blue tank, nice and handy to get at, easy peasy on that front. As already mentioned, we've got the uh, the class 1.5 axle, uh, the heavier duty axle for those heavier duty loader applications on the Farmall C, and then on the Farmall A over here, we've got the slightly lighter duty front axle, which is the class one axle. And as we've already mentioned, there is no front axle suspension options on either of these two tractors, nor is there any uh, cab suspension options on these two tractors either. It is just a rigid front axle on both of these tractors, but you could say that is pretty much to be expected given these tractors price points and their level of specification. However, should you wish to, on both of these tractors, you can specify them with front linkage and front PTO. And that linkage gives you, I think it's a lift capacity of 1,670 kilos. Right, while well, we've got the bonnet popped up on this uh, farm all seat, we'll just have a quick chat about maintenance and access around the engine bay. And to make life easier, especially for servicing, all the service items, i.e. the filters, they're all down one side of the engine bay, down the left-hand side of this engine bay. And then your dipstick, that is fairly handy and that's over on the right hand side over there. As you can see, we've just uh, popped the bonnet on this and in terms of access to all the radiator cores and things like that, what you can do is you can, I'll just push that back, there is a panel on this side which you take off via the screws. Just watch out, you don't drop the screws like I did uh, when I first took it off. They are not, uh, I mean, located as you might say, they, do, they will come all the way out. So that is something to be uh, uh, aware of. And then once you've uh, taken that side panel off, you can get your hands in there, you can get an airline in there. And if you undo this clip here, and hopefully you can do this one-handed, you can pull this radiator core out a little bit. And this, likewise with this front, front core here, if you undo this little catch, you can either push it, you can push it all the way that way, and you can pull it that way a little bit. So you can fairly well open up those cores on the front and uh, yeah, get your hands in, uh, get your airline in and get them cleaned out. Now, another neat trick on both of these uh, Farmall models that the uh, engineers and designers have managed to achieve, they've managed to put all the after treatment under the bonnet at the back there. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, so you've got all your SCR in there, your DPF, DLC, all that lot. It's all combined into that one canister under the bonnet, nicely tucked in back there which means you don't have a massive canister, as you can uh, often find on plenty of other tractors, underneath the front right-hand corner of the cab, which then ends up often blocking visibility down to this sort of midpoint, this front right-hand corner of the tractor. Now, as you might have seen, both of these tractors can be specified as uh, loader-ready, direct from the factory, with the brackets already installed down there on some side rails, uh, that run from the front of the tractor to somewhere around the midpoint of the tractor for that little bit extra strength. Uh, while we've been uh, swapping in between jobs with these two tractors, uh, we've got one loader between the two tractors and we have literally just taken it off this Farmall C and we've popped it over on that Farmall A just here and it was seamless as you would, well, it's as you would expect really, it's how it should be. So that's the new MX loader. That is Casey's new partner for loaders. It used to be Stoll, I believe, but they've now gone with MX and it was super easy to take on and off. Granted, I have tried a few different loaders, different tractor loaders in my time, which makes life easier uh, a little bit when it comes to uh, finding out what a new loader is like. But these were dead easy, 
to uh, get on and off via the brackets and the automatic locking mechanism on there as well. And you've got your, uh, your MX uh, Mac attached, is it something like that? So you've got your MX uh, quick coupler there as well, which does make life uh, a hell of a lot easier when you're taking these loaders on and off. And then moving a little bit further around, underneath the uh, right steps is the access to the battery box. Just take off these two clips here and down fold the steps and the battery is in behind there. So pretty, pretty decent to get at. A uh, little bit of a toolbox here also on the right side. Not a bad size for this uh, size of tractor, you might say. And then there is also the option of these high mounted uh, headlights which I think they pretty much come standard with these tractors if you are specking it, uh, particularly if you are specking it with a loader. Right, so tyre sizes then. On the Farmall A, you can have up to R34s on the back. And if we spin around on the Farmall C, you can have up to R38s on this, which is pretty generous for this size of tractor, I think. Uh, but funnily enough, on the slightly higher spec Farmall C's, which is the Farmall Advanced, they're still limited to R34s, I think, on the back. So if you want your bigger back tyres, your bigger back wheels, go for the slightly lower spec one and you can have up to R38s on the back of this Farmall C. Right, sliding around the back end of the tractor, if we have a quick look at this Farmall A, uh, both the back ends on both of these two tractors, on the A and the C, they are pretty much the same. Biggest difference comes in rear linkage lift capacity, which is 4.4 ton on this uh, on this Farmall A, and it's five ton on that Farmall C just over there. And then in terms of layout at the back end, well, I think it's fair to say it's all pretty self-explanatory, nice and simple. Spills are laid out nicely. You can have up to three mechanical spills on the, both of these tractors. Most of them are down the left-hand side there, which is where you want them, because that's where you're getting in and out of the cab on the left. Uh, there's just a pair on the right-hand side. Things like stabilizers, they're nice and simple. They're just pin adjusted. And there is some actual space and storage space for a drawbar at the back of these tractors. And it's not in a bad spot there as well either, just down the left-hand side here. So that's pretty good. Uh, simple pickup pitches on both of them. There's no pushback pickup pitches on uh, either of these two. It is just a simple up and down uh, pickup pitch on uh, on these two tractors. And if you do want to adjust the flow rate on any of these three spools, there are some handy taps just down here on the on the valve block slices, so you can uh, yeah tweak that to match your uh, match your job. I think the only other little difference on the back end of these two tractors is the trumpet housings. Uh, I think it's a slightly narrower track width on this Farmall A, which matches up with that uh, with that class one front axle on this Farmall A tractor. And just to finish off our little walk round of these two tractors, as already mentioned, it is a four post cab on this Farmall A, and it is a six post cab on the Farmall C, just over my right and shoulder there. Access wise, pretty good on both of them. I mean, with this four post cab, it's a nice wide opening door, pretty decent if you are hopping on and off uh, all day, which, Often you are with these uh, with these smaller tractors, especially if you've got a loader on it, you, you're opening gates and things like that, to and fro and around the yard. Uh, so it's a nice wide opening cab, just a nice straight line up to the seat, nothing in the way, passenger seat folds nicely out of the way, and you can get at the seat without even having to fold the, uh, the steering column up and out of the way as well. So that's nice and good. And given this is a four post cab, I know I've come across lots of four post cabs and their doors can be big, horrible and wobbly where this is quite sturdy actually it's got got some fair old uh, got some fair old steel on the frame there so that's quite a nice sturdy door and then as mentioned if we just uh, go around here it's the six post cab on this but again nice i mean that is a big wide opening door that uh, and as i mentioned when i was driving this with the loader when we do some loader work again it's just easy access straight up to the seat nothing in the way dead simple so there you go boys and girls that is a little bit of a walk around of these two farm tractors i think we'll uh, yeah we'll crack on now and uh, yeah we'll see what else we can do